Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to take a look at one of the most important concepts in animation blueprints, state machines. Let's go. Okay, so next up we have state machines, which are a way of switching between animations and between states depending on the movement of our characters. We can create states, create transitions. In those states, we can place animations, blend the spaces, and whatever we want. This will make it easy to switch between different states, different animations, like we see here, for example, if we use the idle to jump start, to jump loop, to jump end cycle, you can see that it easily jumps and goes back to the idle state. If we remove one of the transitions, you will see that we don't go to jump start. We just start moving, but we don't perform the jump. And as you can see, it is quite intuitive. If instead of this, we just the anim graph directly, the anim graph would be a mess and we would have tons of nodes and a really hard time understanding what it meant. So an state machine makes it easy to create complex logic and complex animation blending depending on the character movement in the anim graph without complicating it too much. Okay, so we are back in the engine. Let's go ahead and double click on the anim graph and let's see how we can create a state machine. Right click and write state machine. Press enter and there you have it, your new state machine. Click on the name and rename it to whatever you want so that you understand properly the anim graph. Let's call it jump for now, like if we were making a jump loop. And you can see that if you double click now on the state machine, you enter inside it and you can see its contents. For now, let's delete it and let's see what the state machines that we already have in our anim blueprint do. To delete it, press backspace or the delete key. Let's now double click on locomotion and let's see what's what. Here we have the first state which is going to be idle and then it goes to walk and run. And we have two transitions to go from one state to the other. The current state is highlighted in orange. If we now activate should move and increase the movement speed, you are going to see it switch states from idle to walking. And if we go further, it would go to running. If we switch off should move, it will go back to idle. And that's pretty much the logic behind the transitions and the states. You can see that we can switch between movement states easily with the variables that we have available to us and without much complication. Let's now see the main state machine. This one is a little more complex, but it is quite easy also. There you have several states, like for example, the locomotion state, which points to the last state machine that we were working with while you are on the ground. And then while falling, you have the jump loop, which switches depending on the is falling variable. As you can see, as I activate it, it goes to the fall loop and in every step, you know what is happening. The key is that you need to go from state to state, switching between them using transitions that are Boolean conditions. Okay, so after we have seen a high level overview of state machines, let's now go one by one and see all of the components. The first one are the states, which are subsections of the state machine, which you can use to uh, play animations or for example, use blend spaces or whatever you want. We are going to be able to transition from state to state depending on a transition rule, which is going to more or less be the logic of the transition. The purpose of one state is going to be to output a final animation or pose that is then going to be the output of the state machine. Okay, so let's now take a look at a simple state machine like the locomotion one. And there we are going to see what's inside the states. You can see that the states are highlighted in orange and are those idle and walk and run. 
they come from the entry state, which is a universal state in every single state machine, which is the entry point. It's a single transition rule that always goes to the first state, which is the idle, and then we can transition and start working with the state machine and go to other states. But the first thing is always coming from the entry, adding a state, and that will be the initial state. As you can see, you can create the states this way, dragging the sides of the states, naming them, or you can right click and just select uh, add a state and that will be the same. Here there are no transition rules because the entry point can only be connected to one state at a time, so there is no need for a transition, it is automatic. Let's reconnect the idle state so the machine stays the same. To create transitions you can drag from the side of the boxes and in the case of the entry you can drag from the execution pin. Just to recap, remember that the entry always goes to the first state and there is no transition rule because of that. In terms of the other states you do need transition rules. It will not be enough just to drag and drop. You are going to need to drag and drop and then state the transition rule. We are going to do this in the next part. I will not dive deep into that right now, but just remember it for later. Now let's delete this new state because we are not going to need it. And you can do that using again backspace or the delete key, selecting it. Be careful because if you click the name, it will allow you to rename it and it won't work. So, okay, let's now double click on a state and see what's inside. Here you can see that we have a sequence player which is just an animation. So in this case we have the idle animation and the output node which is that output animation pose and it is connected directly so it is going to play the animation and that will be the output of the state. There is a small mistake here which is that the animation is only playing once and stopping. If we want the idle to loop we can activate it in the details panel. You can go down to the animation details and loop animation. And that is going to loop infinitely the idle pose until the character moves. So as you can see, the output of a state is quite simple, although it can be a little more complex. Let's see an example of that right now. Let's double click on the walk and run. And here you can see a blend space, which blends different animations depending on a variable. Here we have the ground speed variable, which is the speed of the character that we have on the essential movement data on the left. With this information, the blend space is going to interpolate between walking, running, and anything that you throw in there. If I now activate the should move variable, you are going to see the blend space appear. So let's activate it. You can see it right now. And if I now change the speed, you are now going to see the character switch from idle to walking to running, depending on the ground speed value. So right now, if I input 250, you see it walking. And if I go further to 600, you would see it sprinting. You can see the small green cross that accounts for where the variable is. If I now switch the value smoothly, you can see how it goes smoothly from running to walking to idle. So everything is working perfectly here. The key here is that you can see that inside the state, you can have multiple different animation assets that set the final output pose for the state, depending on variables or not, and you can use whatever you want. Even catched poses that can be the output of another state machine. So this brings infinite possibilities. We also have a lot more nodes that we are going to be seeing in the series, so stay tuned. A quick and easy way to add assets to our states is just going to the asset browser and here you have all of the available animation assets and you can just drag and drop. Like for example, I have this animation and I drag and drop it and that's that. And same thing with lots of things like for example the blend spaces. I will drag and drop and I will be able to use it in the anim graph. And last but not least we have transitions which we already have covered. They are those two arrows that you see on top of the lines and they will 
basically dictate when you switch from one state to another depending on a condition, a boolean condition. To create transitions you know that you need to drag and add a state and with that you will create a new state and the transition to switch states. To return you just drag from the state to the walk and run again and there you have it. Let's now get rid of this state and let's see what's inside of the transitions. If we double click on the circle you see that we have an output node which is the boolean condition so whatever we feed in that pin, if it's true, it's going to trigger the transition. In this case, we are tying the should move to the result of the transition. So to go from idle to walking or running, you need to activate the should move. And that is going to make idle transition to walk and run. So when should move is activated, it will trigger the transition from idle to walk and run. If you stay on top of the circle, you can see the condition in both of them. So we can see that should move should not be true. As you can see, the process is quite simple and straightforward. And this is one of the main advantages of state machines. It is quite easy to express animation loops and transitions between states and complex animation concepts. As I mentioned before, if we try to do this straight up in the animation graph, it would take a lot of space and complexity and we would have problems. Just to make sure that everything is 100% clear, I have paused the preview and activated should move. You can see how the transition fires and if now I go to the preview and press play, you can see how the state switches. If I do the same thing again, you can see how the transition with not should move fires and goes back to idle. So I think with this, everything is 100% clear. A cool trick is that if transitions are too harsh and you need to blend better, you can increase the duration of the transition. This will make it smoother and improve the switching of states. You can also change the interpolation function, go from linear to sinusoidal to maybe exponential, whatever you feel works best. And remember that everything that you select on the animation graph has details on the panel to the right. Anything that you are looking for can be there. Well, so that's it for this video. I hope that you are now clear on the basic concepts of state machines. We still have some things to cover, but we will see them in the next videos. Remember, if this video has been helpful, go ahead, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other on the next videos. Huge shout out and thanks to all my Patreons. As you know, making these videos takes a ton of time and effort because I research in depth all of the topics that I cover. So if you want me to keep making awesome stuff, consider supporting me on Patreon.